Once Descartes confirms that he has knowledge of his own existence, he's able to learn a few things about himself, like I am a thinking thing, and I am thinking these things, I have these thoughts in my mind, and so on. But he needs to do a lot more than this if he's going to build on this foundation a new structure of knowledge. And this is his goal, so he must keep going, and he must find a really good way of demonstrating more truth, giving us more knowledge and more foundations for knowledge, and most importantly, from this knowledge of himself. And here is the first thing he does to do it. He uses this argument for the existence of God. It's sort of a modified ontological argument. Well, you could also almost call it a cosmological argument. It's sort of a hybrid cosmological ontological argument. It's based off his own idea of God. He observes, there is in my thought an idea of a perfect being. And he observes every effect must have a cause which has at least as much perfection as is in the effect. So my idea of a perfect being must have for its cause a perfect being. Now, I'm not perfect because I'm doubting, and I know that's not a quality consistent with perfection. So there must be something besides me that exists and is the cause of this idea of God, and it must be a perfect being, because how else could it have as much perfection as its effect? Therefore, God exists and is a perfect being. Now, this argument has persuaded very few, if any, people to become theists, and probably it's because there's something wrong with the argument. And I think what is wrong with the argument is that the, the idea that a perfect being exists, or the idea of a perfect being, does not have all the perfections of its object. It's an idea of a perfect being, but the idea itself doesn't have to be perfect. The idea itself might well be an imperfect idea, and so could easily have been caused by the mind thinking of it. Uh, as far as I can tell, that seems to be the weakness in the argument. Nevertheless, Descartes seems to think the argument is pretty good, and it's important to understand he does offer other arguments for the existence of God. This is the main one, or the first one, in the uh, Meditations on First Philosophy, or the Discourse on Method Part 4, where he's going through the method of doubt and reestablishing knowledge on a solid foundation. This is, uh, this is how it starts with the evidence for God. But there is more. He gives supplementary arguments. And he does give an ontological argument, a more classic ontological argument, with some modifications from Anselm. But it's an argument based on the idea of God. And um, it's an argument to consider on its own terms. It may not have, this, uh, it may not have the same weaknesses as this argument. Now... After establishing the existence of God, using this argument, which um, I tend to think, and I suspect most viewers of this video will agree, is not a very good argument because of the fact that an idea does not necessarily contain all the perfections of the thing the idea is of. Uh, after all this, he uses the idea of God, he, rather he uses his knowledge that God exists to establish more knowledge. That's coming up next.